here to discuss some of the available methods of treatment of scoliosis and other back problems. We welcome Henry H. Shirk, MD. He is Division Head of Orthopedic Surgery at Cooper Hospital University Medical Center in Camden, New Jersey. And Stephen J. Press, DC, is a chiropractic physician and director of the Allied Chiropractic Arts Center in Englewood, New Jersey. Uh, we talked a little bit about Dr. Weirman's uh, treatment method for scoliosis for a certain degree of scoliosis uh, if scoliosis is more serious then what kinds of treatment are available dr sure well the treatment of scoliosis you know, depends almost entirely uh, on what causes the scoliosis uh, and how severe the scoliosis is uh, the common cause of scoliosis that uh, uh, we're seem to be discussing uh, today is the idiopathic scoliosis which is the type of, uh, of uh, spinal deformity which occurs in an otherwise healthy normal uh, young individual now if the scoliosis is in the neighborhood of uh, 10 degrees uh, to 10 to 15 degrees there is a strong likelihood that the scoliosis won't worsen uh, under those circumstances uh, there's no point to treat that scoliosis because the individual isn't likely to get worse and in fact there's a three to five percent incidence of spontaneous improvement with the mild degrees of scoliosis a child with uh, a 10 to 15 degree scoliosis however has to be followed very very closely at about six months intervals uh, for the possibility of progression and if that child say six months after the initial examination is found to have a scoliosis in the neighborhood of 20 degrees, uh, then uh, there's a concern that is uh, aroused, and one has to be thoughtful that the scoliosis may not uh, eventually require treatment. So uh, you tell the child and the mother and father to bring the child back in another four to six months for a repeat examination and probably a repeat x-ray. And let's assume that that uh, child now is about 25 to 30 degrees, uh, you would possibly consider treating the child uh, if the child were still in the very early formative years about nine to ten the child who's say 13 or 14 probably is close enough to the end well, of growth wait, so there won't be a progression dr. Shirk, let's stop right there 25 to 30 percent after six months does that mean then surgery would be applicable oh no no oh. that's the whole point okay what you're trying to do is to watch this child to avoid if at all possible surgery now if the child is so what would you do then probably nothing if the curve stays under 20 to 25 degrees if a curve gets through 30 degrees I would strongly consider bracing the child especially okay. if it was a younger child all right dr. press now yeah. people may not be as familiar with chiropractic care so you may have to explain a little bit about ch the chiropractic view okay. generally well basically let me just start by saying that uh, there's many misconceptions about what chiropractic is uh, as you said and I think that people are unaware of the education that the chiropractic physician undergoes. They, some people have the idea we get six months in the back of a health food store, and it's, it's now five academic years after college, similar to medicine. And uh, we study anatomy and physiology and biomechanics and, and so on and so forth. And the forth. AMA has recognized well, chiropractic they've, finally? They've been very slow to recognize anything <laughs> new, but uh, they, they finally agreed that it's, uh, it's appropriate for a, uh, an allopathic physician, which is a, another word for an MD, to, to associate, so it's, it's permissible for us to be on the same show nowadays. So now what would be your approach to scoliosis? Well, we take, we take a, a, an approach that basically involves the biomechanics of the spine. We look at the body structure from the point of view of how gravity and how the, uh, the person's the stresses in their life and so on are functioning and, and uh, what the effect is on their body. We find that, see, the term idiopathic as a medical term, and we'll, we'll, we'll have to agree to disagree because we're going to have different points of view on this. But the term idiopathic is a medical term, which has been defined already, means that they don't understand the, the cause. Um, we believe that um, primarily the vast majority of this type of scoliosis is a compensation in which the, the spine is basically a set of building blocks uh, separated by shock-absorbing cushions called discs. And that set of blocks is sitting on a base of support called the sacrum. It's a triangular bone that's part of the pelvic girdle. Now, 
in my view and in the view of many of the uh, most of the chiropractic profession as I understand it the uh, if the sacrum is tipped because one leg is functioning shorter than the other then that pile of blocks is going to be sitting on a base of support that's not level and uh, if if indeed it's not level something has to give since the brain is receiving information from the eyes to keep the head fairly level so that people don't walk around like this all the time uh, something's got to give in between and in our view what happens it's similar to if you built a house on a on a slab and one side of the slab so sink. the body begins to compensate so yes. what is the what is the treatment as as a chiropractor well, would see it as with the, the as with the medical physician we try to find we try to catch this as early as possible we try to avoid uh, this thing from becoming uh, severe enough to warrant surgical intervention if indeed it's it's not found until it's until it's uh, past 20 degrees or so then certainly it would be in Dr. Shirk's, it would be, you know, a, a case for, for but surgery. But what would you do with the 10%? So Let's say that you both found a six-year-old with a 10% curve. Well, that's, that's the whole point. In the chiropractic office, we would look to see which vertebrae are misaligned, but not just misaligned. We find that vertebrae lock. They stop moving normally within their range of motion. This has been a source of disagreement between medicine and chiropractic in that they never recognized the... Uh, the so-called chiropractic condition called a subluxation. Now this is, be, you know, years ago, chiropractors said this was a misalignment of a vertebra, and that wasn't an adequate explanation in, in my view. I think that the, the so-called subluxation really is a vertebra which, which no longer moves normally within its normal range. In other words, every joint has a certain amount it can move. And when this one stops moving the full range, then an inflammation is set up. Or in the event of this type of a condition like a scoliosis there may be no particular inflammation and it's been said that most scoliosis so, uh, are asymptomatic again, what would you do for the six-year-old kid with a 10 percent <laughs> curve i'm sorry that's right uh first thing we would do is we would do a postural and structural evaluation we would determine uh how are the legs functioning and what uh, are they even okay you found all this out he's even. got the problem now we'll what move, would you do now we'll adjust the vertebra okay we'll manually safely very gently and painlessly uh apply a thrust to the vertebra to move it back towards the normal position in other words once that straight line has started to curve this way gravity tends to, to continue it right but you would manipulate the spine at the 10 percent curve to move back okay. this way. now dr shirk are there not in uh, the regular medical profession uh, doctors who also do spine manipulation? Not for scoliosis. Not for scoliosis. No, uh, the, uh, the point of view, I think, is, is virtually uh, entirely different. The, uh, the concept of the etiology of the cause of, of so-called idiopathic scoliosis uh, is really being understood much more thoroughly than it was. And I think that there's really no such thing anymore as uh, a scoliosis, the cause of which is not known. Uh, for example, there are a lot of studies uh, reported now on selective electromyography, testing the electrical impulses of the muscles on one side versus the other. Uh, these muscles, of course, are under the control of the central nervous system, and it's an imbalance in the muscle forces playing on the spine caused by disturbances in postural reflex activity from the brain and central nervous system that actually causes the scoliosis. And you just can't manipulate a vertebra, a single vertebra, back into a into a position uh, because the, if uh, these forces are constantly playing on the vertebra they're going to uh, persist it's a central nervous system disorder that is is not really as as idiopathic it as sounds we previously like a thought. chicken and egg discussion here this is this makes my job mm -hmm. very interesting you're saying it's a central nervous system disorder you're saying it's a compensation for gravity or the fact that one leg might be shorter than the other. Now, that's, that's an interesting... I'm not uh, denying that some of those other forces come into oh, play. Oh, obviously. But which is first, you know? Exactly. I mean, that's the question. Exactly. The point is, well, uh, the point uh, is whichever gets resolved. Uh, a leg length inequality is a, is a recognized cause of scoliosis. And I think you could probably classify scoliosis into structural and postural. That's a recognized differentiation. And a postural scoliosis is a spinal curvature caused by uh, such things as a short leg. If you stand up and a leg is short, your spine is going to curve. However, the vertebrae themselves are not going to be deformed. Okay. In the case of, an, of a real structural scoliosis, the vertebrae itself is twisted, malformed, and wedged. 
by uh, the, uh, the forces that yes, play doctor, on it. As a layman who is an expert in neither of your two professions, let mm -hmm. me just give you some feedback and tell me what to do with it. When I asked you what you would do, and you gave me a classic case, a six-year-old with a 10% curve, you said that that six-year-old would come into your office and you would call them back in six months and take a look to see to what, let me just continue, okay. to see what degree that curve increased. You would actually do nothing in that six-month period. Now, that sort of scared me, and I wondered if... Well, it shouldn't, because, uh, uh, as I said, the overwhelming majority of children with curves under 10 degrees, or 10 degrees or, or, or so, are not going to worsen, and a significant number will get better. It's only two-tenths of a percent of children have spines that are badly enough to form the scoliosis to need treatment. The overwhelming majority just don't need it. See, this, that this, in my view, is, is, the, is the big problem. I think that if we could have, a, if we had a meeting of the minds, and not, not just on the air, but if, we, if the two professions actually had a meeting of the minds, uh, I couldn't agree more, but that if the problem gets to be bad enough to warrant the kind of techniques that medicine has to treat scoliosis, then it's a medical problem or a surgical one. But in, in my view, I would rather not wait and watch it and wait and see if it gets bad enough to do something. My I would point rather is start to do something that if you beginning. take a population of, of a thousand nine-year-olds with 10 degree curves of scoliosis, mm -hmm. your batting average is going to be fantastic mm -hmm. because the overwhelming majority are, are not going to progress anyway and some will spontaneously get better. Uh, so, so you're th almost saying that you'd be treating for nothing is what you're saying. Is no, that I'm your? saying that the wise physician is the one who starts treatment when the patient is getting better anyway. Uh, most of these kids are going to get better. Or, or not worsen. That's a pretty serious uh, statement. Yeah, well, this has been the problem. This, this has been the... the uh, well, before analyzing this has been, what is your answer to that charge? I think that the proof of the pudding is in the eating. In other words, the answer is that one has to take a look at the actual results. Uh, in, in my opinion, there are sometimes there are, there are treatments that uh, are not always uh, totally understood in terms of their mechanism, how the, how the treatment functions. But with, once the treatment has been shown to be safe and effective, then you, you proceed ne necessarily always knowing exactly why it well, works. Well, let's take a specific case. What kind of results would you get with someone who is truly, truly has scoliosis and who went through chiropractic? What well, kinds of results? Well, we treat quite a few youngsters who have scoliosis. When we see, uh, of course, we have a, a family practice as well. We have patients who bring their, bring their whole families and come to get an adjustment once in a while because we believe that if you if you uh, are structurally sound that you're going to stay uh, generally healthier than if you're not structurally sound. Uh, this has been the reason, for but instance, the Olympic the Athletes Advisory Council has Regarding the scoliosis, Dr. Press, mm -hmm. what kinds of results will you get from your method of treatment? Well, of course, in youngsters, I, I agree that there are a certain percentage of them which, who will res whose scoliosis will resolve on their own. This does not say and does not address the fact that there are also a significant percentage who do not otherwise resolve on their own. And the results that we get are, um, are, are uh, sig uh, statistically significant. Um, and I think that, uh, that the, uh, the studies that have, that have demonstrated this uh, are, speak for themselves. There have been studies published in such journals as the Journal of Manipulative and Physiologic Therapeutics which is now an Index Medicus listed publication. It's a recognized medical journal now. And with the brace, what kinds of results and your other methods of treatment? What kind of... My other methods of treatment up to and including operative treatment? Uh, yes. Uh, okay. You don't need to be modest. We know you've had success. Oh, thank you. <laughs> the, um, the results of brace treatment are excellent to begin with. Uh, assuming a child of, say, 9 or 10 years of age with uh, a 40-degree scoliosis or 30-degree scoliosis, that child will probably get a lot better very quickly in a brace. Uh, the difficulty is what happens 5 or 10 years later. Occasionally, uh, with some frequency, uh, the curve will slowly return. Sometimes it comes back rather quickly, and there's even a so-called malignant curve that gets much worse very quickly, even yeah. in the brace, and that child needs surgery. Thank you both very, very much. We have been talking with Henry H. Shirk, MD, Division Head of Orthopedic Surgery at Cooper Hospital University Medical Center in Camden, New Jersey, and Stephen J. Press, D.C., is a chiropractic physician and director of the Allied Chiro Chiropractic Arts Center in Englewood, New Jersey. And next on Straight Talk, a program designed to strengthen your back.
through exercise.